organizers for having us. It's been a, a wonderful experience to have uh, Martin Oros on, on campus. And I just want to give a brief uh, introduction. Martin is a curator and, and an art historian, a PhD. He's the curator of the collection of photography and media arts at the Museum of Fine Arts in, in Budapest. He has been a Terra Fellow at the Smithsonian American Art Museum in Washington, also the first George Kepesh Fellow at the Advanced Studies and Transdisciplinary Research at MIT. And his research and publication have addressed light-based media, photography, avant-garde collecting, abstract, geometric, and kinetic art, computer art, motion picture, and animated film. But here we are sitting with a filmmaker. <laughs> so, uh, Martin, could you say a few words how you went from art history to producing this film? Yes, I will try to. So thank you so very, very much for, for inviting me uh, over here. Uh, this is my first time here in Santa Barbara, and uh, this screening was uh, a first official screening uh, in the West Coast area because my film was first screened in the US in October at uh, MIT in occasion of the 55th anniversary of Kapashi Center for Advanced Visual Studies. Um, so I'm, um, I'm an art historian, I'm a, I'm a curator, I'm working mm. at a Museum of Fine Arts, actually at the Vazareli Museum. The Vazareli Museum is the, the smallest, the tiniest entity of the MFA, uh, mm -hmm. Museum of Fine Arts and Hungary National Gallery. In, in Budapest, and Victor Vazarelli was the founder of optical art. I don't know if you have uh, ever heard uh, his name. Uh, basically, what he did is uh, like uh, concrete, uh, abstract geometric uh, art. He was also born in Hungary, and in the 1930s, the same year uh, uh, mm. then that, that Kepes, you know, he emigrated from Budapest to Paris, and he became a a French-Hungarian uh, artist, and in the 80s, he donated uh, a lot of uh, his stuff to uh, Budapest, so that's why we, uh, my, my ancestors were able to open uh, that, uh, that museum in, in, in Budapest for, for his art. So, um, talk a little bit about how, how Kepes um, ended up at MIT having come to the U.S. in 1944, as we saw in the film, with the being, being in Chicago, invited by Mohor Naj to start the new Bauhaus. Right. And so just, so we're looking at 1944, 45 to 1967, I guess, when he started. Yes, I, 1940, 1945 was uh, when he was invited over uh, to MIT. But already, he, yes, already. but uh, actually he, um, uh, he was invited to teach uh, in Chicago at the right. uh, newly founded New Bauhaus, right. uh, which uh, later became a School of Design and then Institute of Design uh, in the mid of, mid of 40s. Uh, and he uh, taught uh, their photography and he established the first light department. So I, I don't mm. think of any, any other department, uh, you know, in the, in the, the university level, in the ac academic world, uh, that uh, was solely uh, concentrating and focusing on light as a creative medium. So that was, that, that is what Kepesh did, and that involved so not just photography, but uh, he uh, experimented with uh, every possible, uh, mm -hmm. uh, like, tools uh, that uh, would uh, used light uh, as a medium and and also he uh, uh, both advertisement graphic design he, he actually he his first uh, first background his first job was the graphic design this is uh, how uh, he was able to make a living in germany as well so he was not associated mm -hmm. with the bauhaus per se but he knew most of these Bauhaus uh, artists and architects and designers, including Walter Grope, who was the founder of the Bauhaus, mm -hmm. Herbert Bayer, who later in Aspen, Colorado, 
uh, establish this uh, this design uh, like uh, mm -hmm. event uh, every, every year uh, the most uh, right, right. Uh, the best uh, uh, designers um, you know, recuperated mm -hmm. and, and there was uh, like a conference on, on design and uh, he invited to MIT because of his first book uh, the language of vision which he published in 1944 Okay. In, in, in Chicago. So um, one of the things that may not be apparent, but it's very much present in, in the various conversations about Kepesh's work, is that being at MIT seemed to be a very complex, complex balancing act. And I'm, I'm looking at the, the time period. So basically, you, it's the 1960s. It's the Cold War. We have the, the Vietnam War. Uh, we have the post-Sputnik emphasis on scientific development in the West. And so MIT being the, one of the leading institutions in this country, uh, advancing military technological research. Um, there was also the pressures of, of the corporate industries, there was the counterculture movement, which was uh, possibly half of it was anti-technology, the other half was embracing technology in certain ways. Uh, meanwhile, he's trying to push and promote his own research and innovation in, in design and aesthetics. And I think he, he was the first at MIT to have this position. So how do you, how do you, what's your sense of how he managed to kind of navigate this very complex and multi-layered um, situation? Yes, it was not an easy time, you know. Um, during the 1950s, when he uh, first uh, kind of uh, established himself uh, as a professor at MIT, that was the McCartney era. And he had this uh, communist <coughs> past, uh, you know, um, he was uh, a teacher of the Abraham, Abraham Lincoln School, for example, mm -hmm. in, in Chicago. He had uh, contacts to the, uh, contact to the Mexican uh, commu communists, like including Diego Rivera and, uh, and Frida Kahlo. Uh, right. and, uh, and also in Europe, you know, during, uh, uh, during the 1930s, um, he sensed, you know, he, I, I don't know if uh, we, we should mention this, but he had this Jewish uh, origin. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and, you know, he was, he, he was a painter. He was, he was, <laughs> a, uh, he was, he was, uh, so he, his background was on visual mm -hmm. arts, uh, but at MIT, he just met mm -hmm. uh, these wonderful scientists uh, and engineers. Mm -hmm. So um, he um, he tried to uh, establish this 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 center uh, uh, like this place where artists and scientists could find a, a common denominator and uh, and work together, uh, collaborate uh, on uh, certain projects already in the fifties. But um, the the time uh, was not. Uh, um, properties uh, for, for this endeavor. And uh, he uh, uh, was backed up uh, by this uh, president, uh, James Killian, <coughs> who was the scientific advisor of uh, uh, President Eisenhower. And he was the one uh, who um, tried to find a way how uh, uh, the U.S. military could uh, cope with uh, with uh, with the Russian, uh, uh, like uh, the, so, so the so he was he was um, he was the one who uh, tried to find uh, you know like uh, a, a solution for the Cold War problem, and um, and the Vietnam War uh, was was mm -hmm. there when when, right. when Kepesh started the center in 1967, so um, and we. Just uh, seen in the, in the film, you know that uh, Kepesh's uh, center uh, became like a shelter as well mm -hmm. for the student uh, demonstrator, for the student uh, protesters. 
Um, <laughs> but uh, but this is a good question whether uh, he Kapesh wouldn't have that background at MIT uh, would uh, have been able to uh, accomplish his goals uh, in an other uh, institution and other universities and um, and other other uh, place you know which was not MIT. Yesterday, you mentioned also the uh, the president Killian was a nuclear weapons scientist, or just a nuclear. Hey, he was he was he was also uh, involved in the in the Manhattan yeah. Project. Yeah, uh, but he he was also a, a Sunday painter. Okay, and, and that's you know, a, like that's an important uh, probably connection. that's why you know he had this uh, understanding uh, of, of what what uh, what Kapesh's idea was. Uh, and uh, probably it was also because of the Vietnam War that uh, the MIT administration allow, allowed Kapesh. Uh, so they, they gave him a green light uh, to just uh, embrace this idea of, of, of the center. You know, they just wanted to leverage uh, this. Uh, also politically, you know, uh, that time during the Vietnam War, uh, MIT had this uh, accusation <coughs> that uh, being the epicenter of the mili military indus industrial complex. So probably that's why uh, uh, Kapesh was able to uh, uh, just establish uh, his center. And his center was opened on the same day when the center of theoretical phys uh, physics was opened. Okay. So it was also this, this kind uh, of uh, dual uh, uh, like event, uh, one on the science and one <coughs> the, the art side was was uh, had a had a presence, you know, in, in 1967. But then later, um, in the early 70s, uh, Kapesh Center really struggled to uh, find uh, the necessary uh, funding uh, to upkeep uh, the center. So um, and. 1974 was the year when uh, Kapesh was forced to retire. At that time, uh, in the in the 70s, uh, it was probably MIT policy, or maybe uh, the 70s uh, uh, was a different time that the professor had to go uh, to retire. So Kapesh was not able to continue uh, to, to, to uh, direct his own center. And then uh, a German art, uh, kinetic artist, Otto Pina. Um, replaced him and and that was the end of it so mm -hmm. all the freedom gone and uh, and uh, the fellows has to had to teach um, in in order to uh, get the center running so um, there's a interesting photograph in in uh, in the movie where Kapesh is sitting next to Buckminster Fuller yes um, and Buckminster Fuller also is a very, very interesting, enigmatic um, personality. He was um, uh, funded by the U.S. Navy. Uh, a lot of the, er, you know, early kind of developments came through through that. At the same time, he was embraced as a visionary by the counterculture movement. So I'm kind of curious if you have any anecdotes about if they interacted at all or they uh, yeah they were very good friends um, but uh, but they they didn't really um, you know um, uh, had any anything uh, projects or any, any I mean uh, publication uh, that was in the end of the 50s or beginning of the 60s when Buck, Bucky Fuller asked Kapesh to design uh, one of his exhibitions. Oh, okay. uh, but unfortunately it, uh, it uh, didn't uh, uh, succeed, so it's, uh, uh, this exhibition was not uh, realized. Uh, and there is, <laughs> there is, if I remember correctly, there was also an LP, uh, I think Bucky Fuller Talks Aloud, that's, I think that's the title. <laughs> and Kapesh, uh, Kapesh wrote uh, a, uh, I think uh, some mm -hmm. some notes on the on, on, on the cover, like a blurb or something mm -hmm. like that, and he and he designed a cover of that uh, okay. LP, uh, too. So, uh, I want to shift now a little bit towards uh, the filmmaking process. So, what were the challenges in creating a, a movie like this? As I said uh, in the beginning. Uh, 
I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm a filmmaker now, but uh, uh, I have a different background. Right. So when I started my PhD um, 15 years ago um, on, on Kepes uh, uh, in Hungary, uh, the main university in Budapest, I just realized that it, uh, it, uh, that it, it, it would be maybe uh, a better medium to just uh, get these interviews, to conduct interviews with uh, Kepes's uh, associates and and uh, students, uh, rather than just uh, putting a, like a, uh, uh, a tape out uh, on, the, on the table. So, um, so I, I started with a very uh, like uh, obsolete, now obsolete uh, technology, you know, these uh, DSLR cameras just uh, started to appear on the, on the, on the scene. Uh, and I and I recorded also the, the voice separately, so it was <laughs> a, a big uh, challenge for me just to sync, sync, you know, the audio with the video. And also because I uh, I am based in Budapest in Hungary, and all these uh, precious archival materials are here in the states. Right. That's why uh, I had to apply uh, fellowships, you know, to to come here and to, to conduct research on Kepes, which uh, was not uh, that easy. So I managed to do, uh, like uh, you said in the int introduction, that in at the Smithsonian I had uh, like a three-month uh, fellowship, and uh, I was also uh, a fellow at MIT for another semester. And these two terms uh, allowed me uh, or provided me the opportunity to uh, conduct uh, conduct this, this research with my so interviewees. And uh, as you see, as you saw probably in the in the uh, final credit, the end credit, um, I think more than 60% or 70% of my interviewees uh, are unfortunately passed away uh, in the meantime. Now, and what about going through the archives? What about, I'm um, very much interested in, in how you manage to uh, find the things and then once you have them, at the beginning, did you have a kind of concept of how the narrative would go, or, or, you, or w were you discovering things in the archives and then um, kind of assembling them in various ways and eventually coming up with a, a, a kind of way by which to connect them? Yes. I think it, it, uh, it happened very intuitively. Um, you know, I, I just uh, opened a project <laughs> file and, uh, and uh, I, I tried to <coughs> get a sense, you know, which kind of hierarchy I would uh, organize my material, so which kind of structure I would build out of these uh, footage that I, that I have. So the, the first uh, edit, the first version mm -hmm. of my film, uh, that was, uh, I think, uh, more than three hours long. You, uh, right. you, you, you have. I mean, makes sense. You have to uh, consider that I, I had these. I think uh, more than uh, two, two hundred hours of interviews. You know, so a lot of hard drives. You know, uh, where these interviews were, were sitting, and uh, and uh, I just listened to and, and watched all the interviews. Uh, I tried to make transcripts as well. You know, but uh, then if you are editing a film, uh, sooner or later everything will be in your head, you know, and, and you just pull out materials, uh, you know, based on certain criteria. Um, but, but it was a very long time to, to also uh, <coughs> record in these interviews and also a very long time to edit uh, the, the film. And also then uh, when I uh, finished the editing, I contacted a, a musician um, and, and also a, a typographer because the, not just the music but the, the type, the, the font you know, yeah. that I used for, for the film is very unique. Actually, it's an experimental font which was inspired by, by Kepesh's uh, works. So I just uh, sent out a couple of images to the typ uh, typographer. Uh, and he came up with a, with a font uh, design that I implemented in, in the film. So you mentioned um, uh, um, composer, 
Can you talk a little bit about, about the, the music? The, uh, there's quite a range of, of um, musical styles. And um, can you talk about how that happened and how it came to be? Yes. Um, to find a musician was actually not that easy. Um, and um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm more of a visual per person. I don't know anything about music. So with the musician was the same that uh, I tried to assemble like a group of images and uh, mm -hmm. I first I, I contact, con contacted an electroacoustic musician, but I was not very confident with the result. So uh, my wife recommended me um, this, uh, this guy uh, who <coughs> did, uh, who actually uh, in, uh, in the past only did uh, um, films uh, for nature, like uh, for Discovery Channel and, and uh, mostly um, like uh, mm -hmm. these, these films uh, that uh, has, uh, you know, uh, has nothing to do with document, I mean, uh, like art and science documentaries or, or feature films. And, uh, and he, mm -hmm. was, he was very much, uh, uh, you know, inspired by these images. And he, he said that uh, he, is very uh, would be very keen to do to, to collaborate with me on, on this on this project, and I think what he did is really fascinating. Uh, I, I really like his music. Uh, some people don't like the music, mm -hmm. and some people very like the music. So I um, I'm just uh, you know uh, having these uh, these uh, reviews from from both sides. But, uh, but I think uh, that uh, mm -hmm. in most cases, the, the music is really uh, matches very well with, uh, with the images, with the, with, the, with the pictures. And that uh, gamelan music that uh, you might uh, uh, experience, uh, which... Uh, During the, the Mohoi night. Which, uh, um, which is the score, uh, yes. The animation of his light sculpture. Yes, it's, a, it's an experimental film, one of the first experimental film that's uh, been ever done in 1930, uh, this uh, uh, light uh, play, that's the title, the English title mm -hmm. of uh, Moholy Night films. And, uh, and Moholy, I mean, that, that time there were no electroacoustic music, you know, there uh, you had uh, uh, several experiments in, in that area, but, uh, but, uh, but uh, um, Moholy uh, mm -hmm. actually suggested many uh, uh, type of uh, musics uh, that could accompany his uh, his film. So f one was Hungarian folk music mm -hmm. or like right. dance music, right. and the other one uh, was this gamelan uh, music. So that we uh, know about this because in the archive in in at the IIT in Chicago, uh, he put a note that uh, if uh, if you are in the, in the in that mood, then you can just uh, put the LP, okay. uh, which is a uh, gamala music. If you if you don't uh, 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 want to do that, then mm -hmm. uh, it's it's also okay to to use uh, this other uh, music, which uh, would give you uh, maybe the same result. I was also very uh, fascinated by all of the uh, public works. I didn't know he did all those public works, and so and. As we heard, uh, many are, are destroyed and there's probably very little documentation. Is the Har Harvard uh, subway station still in place? Uh, the Harvard su subway station um, were defunct for many, many decades. And, mm. um, and a few years ago, the MBTA, I think this is the, the company, the right. Uh, in, in Boston, the, the transportation, public transportation company, they redid uh, the mural. So uh, they used uh, uh, different technology. Uh, I think there are now, uh, everything is digital and they used LED, LED light uh, that, uh, that would lit from behind on this, this stained glass uh, mural. Um, and uh, the, the the cyber and the pro so the programmation is also also different. Actually, they also uh, reached out to me. They contacted me how to do that, and I suggested them the original idea. But they they just uh, 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 wanted to do something uh, according to their their tastes. So I'm not very happy actually uh, what uh, they did. 
but uh, but it's it's one of the uh, only like uh, cybernetic uh, installation that that uh, Kapesh did and uh, still uh, on on place hmm. because his uh, KLM mural in New York, you know, and the Dutch hmm. airline company's ticket office. Unfortunately, that's gone, right. and nobody knows uh, where uh, the, the original uh, like uh, parts hmm. uh, went to. Somebody mentioned uh, to me that it it, uh, it uh, is or was in a hangar uh, somewhere in New Mexico, but I, I was not able to follow okay. up. So no, uh, actually, uh, that would be um, something that uh, that uh, we might uh, research consider consider to reconstruct. Right. You know. So there is a light museum in Budapest now. They they just uh, have the glow mm -hmm. glowing uh, columns uh, reconstructed based on ba not not unfortunately not based on uh, the original idea. That was a that was a visual artist who tried to redo the thing based on some photographs, you know, some black and white photographs. So mm -hmm. it, it, uh, it really didn't uh, uh, give, you know, give, uh, <coughs> give back the, the, the original sense, the, the original feeling of the artwork, because it was uh, very complex, you know. Kapesh also used uh, uh, like rocks, rock formations and stones, you know, that he placed underneath mm -hmm. on, a, on a mirror. So he just wanted to play around with the idea that uh, the organic uh, quality uh, and also the technological, uh, like uh, engineered quality, are uh, in a playful dialogue with each other. And actually, that um, that kind of leads me to the to the project with the flames because I think that uh, it's a very, you know, for that time period, I think it's a very unique uh, synesthetic approach to integrate uh, kind of natural phenomena with um, with uh, let's say audio and controlled by some kind of device um, I'm not sure how it was controlled no could you say a few things about that in terms of um, uh, he there was a collaborator I remember uh, there were many many collaborators no but for that piece yes for many collaborators. many yeah. Yes, for, because, for because uh, there was a person who wrote the music score, yeah. uh, Paul Ers, and there was also an uh, engineer uh, who, uh, whose name is Mauricio Bueno from Ecuador. Okay. And he was Capaci's student at that time at, right. uh, at MIT. So, uh, and also there was a physicist, so a, a third person, you know, okay. so it was, it was a real uh, collaboration. And, uh, but uh, Kapesh's idea with that piece, the Flame Orchard, was to uh, kind of imitate the the lost the lost uh, warm, warmth of the fireplace. So the fireplace is the, the epicenter of the, or was in the epicenter of the of the house, of uh, where mm -hmm. the, the family uh, were gathering, yeah. you know, right. around. And I think uh, Kapesh had this. Uh, from cherish this this uh, idea from his uh, childhood memory. Uh, so uh, this uh, this uh, quality uh, of light uh, that uh, mm -hmm. that can unify society, unify a, a small nucleus of, of people, like the family, or it can also unify a, a larger group of people, like a society. You know, because he. He wanted to use these works in a in a public space. Uh, the public that he uh, habitually referred uh, to as uh, civic, not public. He never used uh, this term public work, but he always used civic work. So, uh, so the fireplace and these these light uh, artworks, these uh, these huge scale installations, which he was not able to realize, you know, that time in the uh, end of sixties and early. 70s because uh, technology was not that far out. It uh, was the same. That was the same problem with the Bauhaus in the 1920s. Uh, uh, that uh, that they had these uh, big conceptions, but uh, they were not able to realize them. And uh, and I think that's why uh, Kapesh is. Uh, unfortunately, there are only a few uh, sketches, you know, that uh, that would give us the the concrete idea how. 
um, he uh, you know meant to uh, realize these 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 works but mostly Kepesh did, did just uh, some some drawings you know and uh, there were uh, his uh, students or associates uh, who were working at a school of uh, architecture and planning at MIT and they finished the piece for example Robert Prusser uh, who also mm -hmm was a teacher at, uh, in, in Chicago at the School of Design, and Kepesh hired him uh, to MIT because uh, actually Kepesh uh, was looking at the center as the extension of, the ba of this Bauhaus idea. And that was uh, something that uh, in the early 70s, um, MI the MIT administration was not very, not very uh, uh, keen about. So that's why they put Vaini Anderson, uh, he was also in the film, okay. this uh, art historian who came, uh, was a very dandy uh, figure, he was part of the New York artwork, he uh, knew a lot of uh, like pop artists and, uh, and, um, and uh, did uh, many, many exhibitions uh, on, um, uh, for the minimalist uh, uh, artist and conceptual artist. And uh, so Kepesh's uh, Bauhaus-oriented center uh, uh, was uh, a place which what MIT administration wanted to somehow uh, leverage with, uh, with this uh, person, Vaini Anderson, who uh, was the head of the Hayden Gallery. So he, he curated ex exhibitions there, uh, importing New York-based artists, whether as opposed to Kepesh's idea, because Kepesh wanted to uh, have uh, his own fellows, you know, uh, and, and he wanted to promote the Boston, the Boston uh, right. like artist, artistic scene. So that was also like, uh, uh, gave some tension uh, between, between uh, uh, artists and, uh, and, uh, and professors uh, so at that time. It's, at it's interesting that uh, you mentioned artists because I think most of the people in the, the film who kind of gave, gave comments were architects. They were architects because, because of the School of Architecture and Planning. So Kepesh's um, uh, colleagues, uh, yeah. most of uh, uh, his associates were, were architects, uh, not, uh, not artists. But, but Kepesh had also uh, s galleries in Boston and also in New York, the Seidenberg Gallery. Seidenberg was the first gallery which uh, represented European uh, avant-garde art. Uh, for mm. example, they showed, I think, the first time uh, Picasso in the United States. And Kepesh was one of, uh, one of uh, their artists. Uh, they had uh, the gallery at the Madison, Madison, uh, in the Madison Avenue. And Kepesh had also um, uh, a, a very fine, uh, gallery in, in, in Boston, uh, the Schwetzhoff uh, Gallery. Um, so he, he, he had this very interesting uh, mm -hmm. dual approach. So this, this private art and the public art. And his private art uh, was very different than his, his, his public art. So he, he did uh, mostly <coughs> paintings, like uh, abstract, uh, abstract expressionist painting and also uh, phot photograms, you know, he, he reinvented some, some old uh, like techniques on uh, how to do photogram that was uh, already uh, prevalent in the, in the 19th century. And, um, and uh, in his public art, he, he uh, really uh, wanted to embrace this, this idea how to collaborate with, with, uh, with uh, with engineers and, 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 and scientists and how uh, they can uh, just uh, team up uh, with, uh, mm -hmm. uh, together and um, do something that, uh, that is not just aesthetically pleasing, but also functional. So for example, Kepesh designed this, uh, this uh, like a beacon, uh, which would uh, give you uh, which, which is uh, like, like uh, uh, operated with laser lights, the laser beams, but it would also um, display, you know, the uh, meteorological data, you know, the, the, the temperature, uh, the, 
kind of um, hum hum um, humidity and, and all these uh, all these information. So it was like an information uh, display, uh, but also uh, uh, you, you could look at it as an aesthetic uh, object. So my my last question is um, both both uh, Gerd Kepes and Laszlo Mohor Nagy kept their Hungarian first names. Um, it would be a lot easier, I think, for people to pronounce, pronounce George as opposed to Gerd. Uh, any, any anecdotes about that? <laughs> uh, yes, I mean, um, Moholy Nagy uh, used uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the cover of, uh, of, of his books and also the text and articles he wrote, um, the abbreviated form of uh, his first name. So he uh, only used L uh, dot, you know, mm -hmm. to uh, make it less confusing. And, uh, and Kepes, uh, when he was working in Berlin mm -hmm. in Germany, he used uh, uh, the, German. the German equivalent of his uh, first name, Georg. Right. And when he arrived uh, to the United States in 1937 uh, and started to work in Chicago, when uh, you, you uh, open the, this new Bauhaus uh, uh, catalog, you know, the, the, the curriculum of the school, then uh, you will uh, see his name, uh, George Kepes. Okay. But only for a few, he kept it only for a few years because uh, in 1944, his first book, The Language of Vision, uh, was published <laughs> under his uh, original Hungarian name, George okay. uh, Kepes. So so I think it's time for uh, a couple of questions from the audience. Thank you very much, Martin. It was a super film. And as an art historian, I commend you for having switched from one discipline to another. It is an amazing leap that you made, and you really should be congratulated. Uh, I'm curious uh, about uh, Kepish's paintings. Were they, did he, try to exhibit them during his time in Boston? What has happened to them? And finally, is the gallery in Paris, the director of which you had interviewed, a representative of his work at the present? Yes, um, Kepes, uh, the, the, so the main problem is uh, with Kepes is that he was um, a very, um, uh, how, how shall I, I put it? Uh, he was a very generous <laughs> artist. So if somebody visited him uh, at home, he, he would uh, give, you know, uh, uh, at least a small paintings as a present, you know? Um, and, uh, and most of his uh, beautiful mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and most, uh, 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 important paintings are ended up in private uh, collections. So that's why, because I'm also working on a monograph, a first biography on, on Kepes, and I would like to dedicate a chapter uh, to, to him as a painter. And uh, that's, uh, that's a very challenging uh, task, uh, unfortunately, because uh, even, uh, even uh, collections like uh, like uh, like a Chase Manhattan Bank in New York, uh, for ten years of uh, uh, constant uh, like uh, search to, to reach the the uh, collection supervisor, I managed to do that uh, two weeks ago. Okay, and it turned out that they have incredible Capuchin paintings from the end of the fifties and early sixties. And uh, at some of some of uh, the major collections, I uh, yesterday I I screened you a painting uh, he did also in the fifties uh, titled uh, "City," that is uh, in the collection of the San Francisco Museum of uh, of Modern Art. And uh, obviously, there are also many paintings in uh, in Hungary because uh, in the same. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, same manner that Victor Vazorli donated uh, uh, a, a chunk of his uh, estate to, uh, to his homeland. Kepes did the same in the early, early 90s when he was still alive. 
So we have a Kepesh museum, a Kepesh, it's called Kepesh Institute in uh, the northern uh, part of uh, Hungary, of, uh, not far from the city uh, or the settlement, the village uh, where Kepesh was born. And uh, we have there uh, more, than, more than 50 of his paintings. But I just, uh, uh, I just uh, get, uh, get very uh, excited by the fact, uh, you know, that uh, uh, a week ago I, I, I visited uh, Stanford University in, in here in California where uh, Kepesh's papers went to. So it is hmm. also very interesting why not MIT uh, hmm. purchased Kepesh's papers because uh, there was a second-hand uh, a uh, bookstore in Boston, which uh, offered Kepesh's archive you know, 10 years ago. It was on sale and, and it, was, it, it uh, somehow ended up uh, here in the West Coast, you wow. know, Kepesh's papers. And, and uh, by browsing through uh, those boxes that uh, I've never had the chance to uh, look at uh, last week, and I just came across uh, with uh, thousands, really not hundreds, thousands of uh, transparencies with, uh, with mm -hmm. Kepesh's uh, paintings. Unfortunately, they are just uh, the transparency without any, any inf additional details or, or, or information like the title, the dimension mm -hmm. or the year when they were painted. So that would be also um, a very uh, challenging uh, task to ju just to do an inventory and try to refine the, the, the original uh, location of, uh, of, uh, of, his, of his paintings. This, this person, uh, uh, Massimo Vignelli, who was the designer of the uh, New York subway New York map, subway. He, uh, he just uh, got as a, as a present from, from Kepesh the most wonderful painting, I think, uh, that, uh, that Kepesh ever, ever done. Uh, it's uh, titled Rome because that time in the 60s, uh, Kepesh was a fellow at the uh, American Academy in, in Rome and he had a, a studio uh, over there and he painted uh, some, of, uh, some of works there and one of them ended up in, in the collection of, uh, of uh, Vignali who unfortunately also died a few years ago. Is there uh, another question? Uh, thank you. It was really uh, quite a, a wonderful cinematic experience and, and also very uh, informative. Um, I had a question uh, about one of the people who showed up, all sorts of people showed up and, and uh, they were in that context, but there was one that, that stood out to me that I'm curious about. Octavio Paz was in, in the beginning of the movie and uh, then there was never mentioned again. Uh, say it again, his name? Octavio Paz. Octavio Paz. Octavio, Octavio Paz. Paz. Yes, yes. What was his connection? Yes. Um, so in, in these uh, black and white uh, sequence of images that uh, uh, I try to, you know, use as an introduction or like an opening score, um, um, I selected some, some of these uh, persons. Uh, Kepesh uh, was... Uh, maintained a very close connection with. Uh, and Octavio Paz uh, was one of them um, because uh, Kepesh was not only uh, uh, contacted uh, scientists, um, uh, but, uh, but also he had many <coughs> friends who were writers and, 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 and poets. Uh, and uh, and uh, Octavio Paz, um, uh, was the one who uh, I think uh, uh, was also a friend of uh, this architect uh, Sert, Ho Ho uh, Jose uh, Sert, right? The uh, uh, Spanish architect. Um, and uh, Sert designed the house of uh, Gerald Holton, this uh, uh, Harvard uh, physics professor who was the uh, head of the unity of the science movement uh, at, at Harvard. Mm -hmm. So his place was like uh, uh, 
like the epicenter of these uh, emigre uh, artists and scientists. And Octa and and uh, and Kepes uh, mentioned uh, in many of uh, his interviews that uh, that he had uh, long discussions uh, with Octavio Octavio Paz as well. Unfortunately, <laughs> I don't know what they were talking about because. Uh, there are uh, no transcripts uh, uh, about uh, these uh, like gatherings or, or talks, but um, but I'm, I'm sure that uh, that they were uh, uh, met uh, also there in Cambridge and also in in Wellfleet. You know, Wellfleet, uh, the Cape Cod, that was also a gathering place during the summer for. Uh, all these uh, professors who, who were working uh, in, in, in Cambridge. And, uh, and mm -hmm. uh, Octavio Paz was a frequent guest of, of, of Kepes because we also have the guest book. Kepes had a, back, a guest book uh, mm -hmm. in uh, his Wellfleet uh, apartment, his summer cottage. Um, and you can just, uh, you just uh, read uh, and study the list uh, of, of of these uh, of these uh, pages, you know, that are in mm. the guest book, and that's also available in the collection at mm. Stanford. Uh, you will you will really uh, get shocked, you know, that uh, how many how many incredible people uh, he he uh, was in in contact with, and uh, they came to visit him mm. during so, the summer. So, in, in closing, because I think we have to close. Uh, I just want to thank uh, Marton all the way from Budapest to come here and to fill in all these gaps and my personal knowledge of, of the early starts of the arts and science and technology connection uh, at MIT. So thank you very much and thank you very much for inviting me over. Mm -hmm.